wonderful presentation that I would dare say almost every single household in the United States has seen at some point. There are some texts of scripture that I believe are a gospel presentation in about one line. And you just heard it up there. If you're wondering which one it is, it's the one that was printed in this past week's paper. Uh, The city of Hohenwald wanted me as a subscriber to have a very Merry Christmas and a happy and blessed New Year. It says so in the big article where the snow is. But they put a verse just above it and it says, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I want us to take that text of scripture this morning and I want us to look at at Christmas from heaven's point of view. I was listening to a a song on the radio the other day, it was Mandiza, and the song is what, what what Christmas means to me. And uh, I'm, I'm not trying to down Mendeza, but truthfully, it doesn't matter what Christmas means to me. The question is, what does Christmas mean? What does it mean from God's point of view? And I, I think if we listen to the angels, they have a pretty good seat at, at seeing what Christmas was like from God's point of view. And so this morning, I encourage you to turn in your Bibles to Luke Chapter 2, beginning at verse 14. So you have this host, this heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased. And I'm going to guess some of you who've memorized this in the King James, that probably just is like fingernails down the chalkboard to hear it differently, but we're going to take this apart for just a few minutes. Christmas, from heaven's point of view, if you're following along in your outline, um, we're going to click along pretty quick because we have communion to get to, and I want you to know that I'm making a beeline to the cross today. Christmas time... Is a time to worship like no other. Christmas is a time to worship like no other. Look again at how the angels who live in heaven, they're surrounded by the presence of God day in and day out. Listen to how they begin the Christmas account. Glory to God in the highest. The word glory, doxa, it means Inherent value, real value, the weight of something. Here's what's crazy. The the inherent value, the glory of God is something that you and I cannot fathom. Everything that God is, is, is expressed through his glory. And the angels say, glory to God in the highest. Now, in the highest, we, we're not sure what the in the highest part means. Does that mean glory to God who he is in the highest? Possibly. Does it mean glory, give God glory to the highest degree you can? Possibly. We just know that the text is glory to God in the highest. Well, if glory is something that God shows us, and it comes out of him, why does it say glory to him? It's because God expects those who see his glory to recognize it and give it back to him. This is an amazing story. That Christmas when God allowed his son to step out of the heavens into mankind's story, this is the epitome of God's glory revealed on earth. 
And the angel's first command to us is recognize what God has done and give him praise for it. So if you wanna know why we got up this morning, if you wanna know why we've gathered here, it's not because we have fancy duds to show off, it's because we are here to recognize that God put Jesus on display and we wanna thank him for it. The text goes on. It says, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace. Let's just pause right there. Christmas is when peace came. Peace is one of those misunderstood things in scripture because we think that peace is the absence of problems. It's not. Um, I have a puzzle here. Help me out. What do you see? Okay, so of all of this picture, you notice that a piece is missing. Why did you notice that a piece is missing? Well, it's a rather crucial piece, right? It's the head, whose head? I, I'm, it, 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 it's Moses' story. I'm guessing that's probably Pharaoh's daughter. The reason I say that is I know what the head looks like. <laughs> See, of all of this picture, you didn't tell me that this is the story about Moses coming up out of the Nile you told me a piece was missing. Can I tell you that the word irene for peace in this story is defined like this, wholeness, with all the essential parts joined together. See, here's what happened in the whole story leading up to Christmas. There was God's people, Moses included, who was part of this story. God had a people and he, 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 he set them apart for his, his own. And they were to have a relationship with him. And Moses later on would go on and he would be, be the one who heard God give the law. And so the law was given, but people still found a way to mess up the law. And so there was still a piece missing in people's lives. They needed wholeness and they couldn't get this wholeness from the law. And when people would look at God's children, Israel, yes, they were covenant people, but there was still a piece missing from them. They weren't whole. And the Christmas story says that God came to bring wholeness the full puzzle. He came at Christmas to make your life and my life a complete picture. See, it doesn't matter how much money we have or what kind of home we live in or what kind of family we have and stuff we have. If the essential piece of Christ in your life is not in here, I can promise you today you have no peace because there is separation between you and the God who wants to redeem you. Now, even with peace in your life, you still may not like the picture that you, of your puzzle. You may not like your puzzle. You may think, Lord, I've got you in my life, but my life still is a messed up mess. And God says, you know what? But that's the puzzle I gave you. Yeah, but my puzzle's not as smart. My puzzle's not as, as wealthy. My puzzle's not as, as nice as somebody else's. And God says, as long as Christ is in there and gives you peace that completes the picture, you don't worry about what your picture looks like compared to somebody else's picture. You just need to make sure that peace is there. And so I'm telling you today that the reason we're here is because Jesus Christ came to give 
peace, the kind of completeness that only a relationship with him has. If you don't have that peace, you're just a headless puzzle. Next, Christmas is the story of man being made whole on the inside. Listen to what it says about peace. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among men. Now, I I know some of you, your Bible says peace toward men. I, I have actually in your outline written out the original words in the original language so that you can see it with your own two eyeballs. Irene is the word peace. The last word, anthropos, it's where we get anthropology, study of mankind. So it's peace and man, but there's a word between the two. What is the word between the two? N, E-N. I'm not a big fan of the way some of the modern translation, well, even King James translates E-N. And the reason I say that is because E-N should be translated in, I-N, in English. Here's what the word E-N means. I want some candy. There's a problem. There's a wrapper around it, right? So where's the candy? It's in the wrapper. And you get to watch me eat candy. The candy was not among the wrapper. Mm -mm. The candy wasn't toward the wrapper. The candy is in the wrapper. This makes a world of difference. Because look where it says peace is. Where does peace come? Ray, come here for a second. Years ago, you, you were a mess, right? I'm not telling them anything you hadn't told me. You were a mess, right? You knew all about church. You knew all about the Christmas story, right? But were you at peace? Were you a whole man? It wasn't until God did something in here, right? In your life. Because I'm telling you this, because peace is personal. He says, glory to God in the highest because God brings peace, wholeness inside of a man. That's what the text says. Irene in Anthropos. He brings peace in mankind. Thanks. Because I tell you that because that's what I want you to have today. You can have wholeness. Regardless of how messed up your life has been, you can have wholeness inside because Jesus came. Now, here's the kick in the gut. The next thing, Christmas is a gift, a great gift to those who will accept him. The text says that there's peace among men with whom he is pleased. With whom he is pleased, man, that sure sounds conditional. It is. Do you realize that God is not pleased with everyone? The word pleased here means what, what is good or beneficial to someone and it's based on God's pleasure. It requires faith. Listen to, to, to in the definition, it says, 
God's good pleasure results from his gift of faith birthed in the believer, but ironically, it requires 100% of our participation. (laughs) The word for pleased is when he thinks something is good and then the recipient also believes it to be beneficial. So the recipient takes what is good. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, wholeness to the man on the inside who agrees with God on what is good. So what is good? What is good is the fact that Jesus Christ came and he lived a sin-free life for you and for me. He died on the cross so that his blood could be a new covenant, a new promise. It says if you take his body, then you're committing to follow his way. Scripture tells us if If you want Jesus, then you have to walk as Jesus walked. So in a few minutes when we take the bread, you're committing to Jesus, I am gonna follow you and your way. When we take the cup in a few minutes, that's you telling him, I thank you for that new covenant and I am in a relationship with you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, in a few minutes, there's gonna be someone who can talk to you. Just come and grab one of us. We'll talk to you about what it means to follow Jesus. But, but we're ending the service today taking communion because Jesus at the end of his life said, continue to do this until one day when we get to do this in his father's home. And so that's why we're gonna celebrate today is because we remember what Jesus did for us. I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and bow your heads. I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and prepare your heart for what we're about to take. Don't take this lightly. This isn't snack time in big church. This is a commitment, a, a picture of what you have committed to the Lord and what he has committed to you. In just a minute, these elements will be passed out. I ask you just to wait until everyone has it and we'll all take it together. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're welcome to take this. If you're not a follower of Jesus Christ and you have not committed your life to him, don't take it because there are are penalties that the Lord says if we take this with the wrong heart. Lord, we come to you and we thank you for this morning that we do get to celebrate Jesus' birth. But at this part of the service, we thank you for his death and for his resurrection, for the fact that we have eternal life with you. I love you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.